Rapper Tupac Shakur's declassified federal files of his unsolved murder investigation have been released online, which reveal unnerving documentation of the LAPD Association being to events within the timeline of his unsolved killing. Do you have any ideas as, as who you think assassinated Park? Any, any suspicions about anything at all? Because I know a lot of people have, have their own theories and so forth. But what is Mokrim Shakur's views on, on who assassinated Park? Um, cops. Documents have been declassified by the FBI, being on their investigations into the unsolved deaths of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls. The documents uncover the murders incorporated in an association to the LAPD, and redacted parts of the documents may insinuate that the same tactics were used to carry out both murders. The FBI investigation coincides with findings by LAPD Detective Russell Paul who was assigned to look into the death of Biggie Smalls. Paul had uncovered connections into corrupt LAPD officers who he had connected to the crimes. Ultimately, he was removed from the case after making accusations of a LAPD cover-up. The declassified FBI documents, which were placed on the FBI website, coincide with the same findings of Russell Paul, with there being an LAPD association. In this video, we're gonna take a look into the declassified FBI files being of both Tupac and Biggie, to reveal the FBI's investigation done on the unsolved murders. And Hackey, a former Compton School District police officer, worked for two years as an undercover agent for the FBI and ATF helping the feds. The FBI had been investigating Tupac along with death row records who he had been signed to all throughout the 1990s after infiltrating a record label through the Compton Police Department. Kevin Hackey was a part of the Compton Unified School District's police force, who was used to infiltrate death row records by the FBI, along with the ATF, due to his connections to Compton PD. Reggie Wright Jr. was a Compton cop who was brought into death row records in the mid-90s, with there being several stories put forth as to why he was introduced to the label. One of the stories comes from the Snoop Dogg murder trial, where death row artist Snoop Dogg, along with his bodyguard McKinley Lee, were charged with first degree murder after allegedly killing a 20 year old gang member in self defense. Reggie Wright Jr. had been brought in during this time to bring in a new security service to supply police services to the label so an expert witness could be provided if future legal events were to occur. Another story claims that Death Row Records owner Suge Knight, who had been paying blood gang members from Compton to supply his personal security, had an alleged plot against him by the blood gang members who were going to hold him for ransom. Reggie Wright Sr., who was the head of Compton's gang division, got intel of the plot and warned Suge Knight, with Reggie Wright Jr. then being brought into the label. Another story comes from Jimmy Iovine of Interscope Records, who is getting distribution for Death Row Records for his company's relationship to Priority Records. Iovine had went on the radio show Sway's Universe in 2017, where he claimed he was the one who told Suge Knight to hire cops for security, only to later find out that they were part of the Rampart corruption scandal. I insisted they get real security, real cops. So next time I go, there's real police. I found that they were Rampart guys. Kevin Hackey had testified in court of witnessing several police officers who were implicated in the LAPD Rampart corruption scandal, allegedly providing security services for death row records. Kevin Hackey had been applying to work for US intelligence, including the CIA, where he was then recruited as an FBI and ATF asset. He was promised a promotion into his dream role if he were to infiltrate death row records by going undercover as a bodyguard to collect information on the label. Hackey was specifically chosen due to his connection to Compton PD, with death row's head of security Reggie Wright Jr. being former Compton PD, with the FBI then infiltrating the label through Compton PD by using Hackey. Hackey revealed how the FBI had Suge Knight and the label under surveillance, with this being real FBI surveillance footage coming from 1995 of a death row nightclub in Las Vegas. When Hackey was first recruited after joining Reggie Wright Jr.'s security service, the FBI personally showed him surveillance photos of Suge Knight and others. Hackey also revealed how the FBI had Suge Knight's personal communications tapped along with the employees of Death Row. Hackey, being on assignment for the ATF, allegedly introduced arms trafficking to the label in what are known as ATF gun walking operations. Tupac's former artist Napoleon, who was making songs under Death Row, claimed Kevin Hackey introduced arms trafficking to the label 
by selling Tupac's rap group that outlaws guns as well as bulletproof vests. There was a guy named Hacky. He was an undercover ATF. He was selling us guns so we could keep track of him. Yeah. And also he had a connection to bulletproof vests. Napoleon believed this was part of what are called gun walking operations which are carried out by the ATF. These are operations where ATF assets introduce firearms and weaponry being into a criminal organization with the objective being to then track and trace them leading to arrests. Hacky later revealed to Fox News how one of Tupac's group members' weapons was tracked and traced by the FBI and the ATF being through the Santa Monica Police Department, which he claimed to his belief was then used in the murder of Tupac Shakur. Tupac performed at the House of Blues on July 4th, 1996, and while there, his group artist by the stage name of Hussein Fatal was searched by an off-duty Santa Monica cop who was providing security for the venue. An off-duty Santa Monica cop working security confiscated a 40 caliber Glock handgun similar to this from a member of Tupac Shakur's entourage. A 40 caliber Glock was confiscated and Hacky revealed how it had then been picked up by the FBI being through Santa Monica PD where it was then ran through the federal database by the ATF where it came back as clean. Go over to Santa Monica Police Department to pick up this firearm. Hackey says he first showed the handgun to his FBI handlers in 1996. Hackey claimed just over a month later that the same 40 Glock was used in the murder of Tupac Shakur. A month later in Las Vegas, investigators say it was a 40 Glock handgun that killed Tupac Shakur. Hackey believes the murder weapon was the same gun. I believe it is. This fight involving Tupac and a rival Crip gang member at the MGM Hotel was staged so the rival could later be blamed for Tupac's murder. Relating to the case of Tupac, 119 pages of FBI files have been declassified, which do not include the unsolved murder case, as these files instead were included within Biggie's FBI file. Tupac and Suge Knight were shot at 13 times in a drive-by shooting, being in Las Vegas, which took place on September 7th, 1996, with Tupac dying on the 13th as a result. Hackey revealed how he had seen official FBI documents which showed how the FBI have surveillance footage of the shooting taking place. According to Hackey, FBI agents and ATN agents were in cars just behind Tupac on the night he was shot. Somebody who was working for the FBI, Kevin Hackey, said he had the documents to prove that the FBI had Tupac under surveillance when he was killed. FBI documents revealed LAPD Rampart connections to the timeline in Las Vegas when Tupac was shot. The classified FBI files reveal how LAPD Rampart cop Kevin Gaines was granted a special assignment by the LAPD deputy chief for something which took place in Las Vegas during the time Tupac was shot, with him arriving two days before and leaving two days after. Kevin Gaines was a LAPD Rampart cop who was found to have been dating Suge Knight's ex-wife Sharifa Knight, who was also Snoop Dogg's manager. Reggie Wright Jr. asked Sharifa Knight if she had ever cut any checks to Kevin Gaines being from Death Row Records, which she denied and claimed that when he worked, he was paid cash by Snoop. Kevin Gaines, did you ever cut him some checks from Death Row Records? Nope. Even when he worked, he was paid cash by Snoop. Kevin Hackey claimed there were three LAPD officers which would show up regularly at the private parties which Suge Knight threw, being for his inner circle, with Kevin Gaines being the only one who Hackey knew by name. Hackey would later go on to identify officers David Mack and Rafael Perez, with Hackey providing numerous places and dates where he had seen the officers around death row. Hackey recalled the first time he claimed to have seen Officer David Mack providing security, was allegedly at the 1995 NAACP Image Awards. Hackett also claimed that he had witnessed David Mack and Rafael Perez attend multiple death row events being in Las Vegas, with the FBI file revealing how Kevin Gaines was there on a special assignment during the time of Tupac's murder. Author John Potash, who wrote the FBI's War on Tupac, revealed how LAPD detective Russell Poole had asked his superiors as to why so many officers were working within death row records, to which he got the response of, quote, consider them covert agents, unquote. Los Angeles police officer found dozens and dozens of his fellow police officers at all levels of death row records. When he went to his superiors to ask what were they doing there, uh, they said you can consider them covert agents. Kevin Hackey had been assigned elsewhere by the FBI on the night which the shooting took place, which inconveniently interfered with the security's radio system, 
as Hacky was in possession of Tupac's bodyguard Frank Alexander's radio, so it could no longer be used for security purposes. I believe that the FBI conspired to orchestrate the murder of Tupac Shakur. The US intelligence orchestrated Tupac Shakur's assassination. Four witnesses who were security officers being in the hospital Tupac was in, named LAPD cop officer Richard McCauley as being on an assignment guarding the trauma unit around the clock, being on shifts with Compton police officer James Green. James Green was also responsible for transferring Tupac's ashes from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. Police reports show that Kevin Hackey was revealed as an undercover FBI asset for the very first time after he had visited the hospital days after the shooting, where hospital staff had witnessed him reporting back information being to the FBI using a hospital phone. The FBI files in Tupac's case file also include documents from a gang war which had broken out being in Compton following Tupac's murder. Compton cop Larry Finch's brother Bobby Finch had been found dead which then sparked a gang war in Compton between the Bloods and Crips. This was after Orlando Anderson being of the Southside Compton Crips was labelled as Tupac's killer as the shooting had occurred just hours after Tupac and a group of Blood gang members had jumped the Crip being in the MGM Grand Lobby. This fight involving Tupac and a rival Crip gang member at the MGM Hotel was staged so the rival could later be blamed for Tupac's murder. Suge Knight had done an interview from prison with the co-author to LAPD detective Russell Poole, where in the interview, he claimed that Orlando Anderson was not the shooter and went on to reveal his beliefs on how he feels that the cops were implicated. Whether it be Tupac's killing or uh, Christopher's killing, LAPD has known this all along, that an actual ex-officer did the shooting. Keefe D, who was the uncle to Orlando Anderson and was also in Las Vegas, who claimed that Orlando Anderson was the shooter, recently claimed in a Vlad TV interview how allegedly the cops were working as hitmen for death row records. He had also claimed in the same interview that the FBI had visited him in prison in 1998, where they ran by him their investigation of how the plot allegedly took place in order to take over the company. When I went to jail in 98, the FBI, they was there. They all came to myself. They said, uh, we already know that hit was for Shug Knight because he didn't pay uh, Rafael Perez and you took over his organization. We know all about everything. Who killed rapper Notorious B.I.G. and were LAPD officers involved? Biggie's FBI case files reveal a lot more about the LAPD connection. Biggie Smalls was murdered six months after Tupac in a similar drive-by shooting being outside the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. These are FBI surveillance photos of Biggie's last few moments in Los Angeles before he was murdered. Kevin Hackey had also revealed how the FBI also have Biggie's murder on tape. Biggie's death had taken place after leaving a Vibe magazine after party in the Peterson Automotive Museum. The declassified FBI files read, quote, Several sources have identified the shooter as a light-skinned black male wearing a suit and bow tie. Redacted has been identified by several sources as being the trigger man. It has also been noted by several sources that Redacted, other LAPD officers attended this party and were seen Redacted just prior to the shooting. Sources have stated other LAPD officers were present and seen talking on cell phones when Wallace was leaving the party and entering his car. It's alleged that the same tactics, Redacted, were used to pull off the Wallace murder. Because of the professional manner in which the Wallace murder took place, it is alleged that not only could one gang member, Redacted, mob Pyru blood not pull this off, but it would have taken a large contingency of people slash officers. Unquote. The FBI investigation was the same results which LAPD detective Russell Poole had found being in his own investigation. The information had been used by Biggie's family in a 2005 civil trial against the LAPD for half a billion dollars. The civil trial alleged that corrupt Rampart cops David Mack, Rafael Perez and Kevin Gaines may have possibly played a role in the murder 
using police radios and other tactics to have carried it out. Russell suspected police officer David Mack for orchestrating and organizing the hit, using scanners and radios that were later found in his house. The declassified FBI files reveal how a search warrant was issued for David Mack's home after he was involved in a 1997 robbery of a Bank of America where LAPD scanners and tactical items were found along with the same type of weapon used in the Wallace murder and rare Gecko 9mm ammunition which was found at the scene. A black SS Chevy Impala was found in his garage which matched the description of the shooter's vehicle. FBI agent Phil Carson wanted to make an arrest for the Biggie murder based on these findings but his superiors didn't allow him with following up with charging the officer. The declassified FBI files read quote, after exhausting all relevant leads, Prosecuting Assistant United States Attorney Blank reviewed the prosecutive report provided to him by Blank. Assistant US Attorney Blank stated he did not believe there was enough evidence for any indictments and declined to prosecute captioned case which in effect closes it and will no longer be investigated. Unquote. Poole says he uncovered dirty cops while investigating the murders of rappers Biggie Smalls and Tupac Shakur. At that meeting, I was ordered not to uh, investigate any further. The LAPD issued a separate investigation of cop Greg Kading, who claimed Biggie's killer was a blood gang member called Wardell Faust, which led to the $500 million lawsuit being dropped against the LAPD. The FBI investigation, however, as we saw, claimed the murder was carried out so professionally that it could not have been a rogue gangbanger, but instead a contingency of people slash officers. The FBI documents have a redacted part which claim that the same tactics were used by the cops in a previous crime being in the Biggie murder, with some people believing it to be the bank robbery, with others believing it may have been the Tupac murder. The exact same tactics were used to kill Biggie Smalls, US intelligence would call collateral damage. Suge Knight spoke on this in his interview with Russell Poole's co-author, as he claimed it was the same circle of people who had carried out both murders. They saw the first one, they saw the second one, the same people, same circle of people. This then goes into the theory that Biggie was murdered in order to make it seem like an East Coast West Coast beef was the motive behind the murders to cover up what actually took place. Biggie was killed for no other reason than to advance this theory that the conspirators that had tried to take out Suge Knight were putting forward. FBI asset Kevin Hackey had claimed that the murders will remain unsolved due to the amount of high-level police involvement in the two cases. There's certain documentations which indicate certain people who were involved all along. But again, but LAPD maybe. is sitting on a major piece of the puzzle. Hackey, after being removed from the death row undercover work by the FBI following the two murders, was later found with numerous firearms in the trunk of his car, which he was then locked up for and sent to prison, with some believing he was set up by the agency after using him in the gun walking operations. In this video, we took a look into the declassified documents which were placed on the FBI website concerning the unsolved murders of Tupac and Biggie. The files contain documentation from Russell Poole's investigation into the unsolved cases which he claimed evidence may have indicated that allegedly crooked LAPD cops could have been involved. Russell Poole believed that the events were orchestrated professionally using police scanners and radios. Radios being used, communication, and it had to be experienced police officers knew exactly what to do. Former FBI asset Kevin Hackey and LAPD detective Russell Poole have both said that the cases will remain unsolved due to the alleged connections to high-level LAPD involvement. FBI agent Phil Carson also believes in the same LAPD theory due to the FBI's investigations into the cases. The FBI documents revealed that the assistant United States attorney believed that there was not enough evidence in the LAPD theory to make arrests in the cases. Russell Poole dropped dead in the LA County Sheriff's Office in 2015 after he had gone there to provide new evidence relating to the police theory, which was also going to be proposed as being used as a bargaining chip in Suge Knight's 2015 legal case. Many people have found it odd how Russell Poole had dropped dead within the County Sheriff's Office after going there with new evidence around the police corruption cases relating to the unsolved murders. Let me know what your thoughts are in all this in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, smash the thumbs up button 
Also, don't forget to subscribe and press that bell button so you can get all the future notifications for when I upload. Once again, thank you so much for watching and until next time, goodbye.